The first letter that we'll be reading is Said Suhail's. Said is a 46-year-old uh, Malay man who was sentenced to death in 2015. Uh, Said had grappled with drug dependency for uh, very, very many years of his life, um, starting with the grief from the death of both of his parents. Um, he struggled with mental health issues and traumatic experiences being institutionalized in um, the Reformation Training Center, which is prison for kids, um, the Drug Rehab Center, and IMH. Um, he had struggled his whole life to find a stable job, but faced constant rejection for being a drug user uh, who was discharged from NS. And what our country doesn't honor is that Said is a bright, intelligent man who loves books, enjoys literature deeply, and is always um, writing his thoughts, penning down his thoughts and reflections. Uh, he's been learning Greek, Korean, Latin, and Persian in prison. And um, yeah, so the, the Dear Said campaign in 2021 um, moved many people to write and send letters to Said, showing solidarity and care for him. And we hope one day he gets to read these letters. Um, Said's letter will be read by a Christian, um, when I first read Said's letter, I was um, inspired and struck by how much of a performer and orator he is. Um, you know, this letter is deeply poetic and deeply charismatic. Um, you know, it isn't necessarily just read as a letter to a sister, I think it also reads as a call to action. Said's letter to a sister dated 5th November 2021. For want of a nail, a horseshoe was lost. For want of a horseshoe, a steed was lost. For want of a steed, a message was undelivered. For want of a message, the war was lost. A Japanese saying. We rarely get a chance to talk about what's really going on in our heads. I'll get this ball rolling then. Don't blame yourself like you did the last visit you came to see me. I do not blame you for anything. We all have our own demons to face, and some demons keep coming back. I could recommend a couple of books for you to read, but the world is too hectic out there to put aside time to read. So, I'll compress what I know into words. I've learned a lot from my keen interest in Buddhism. It's not a religion per se, it's a practice and its belief system allowed me, during my most sane moments, to accept my lot in life. Why is my life so sweet? How come only bad things happen to me? And many more such questions have plagued me, and my only refuge is karma. It's a universal energy, does not require your belief for it to exist, and with reincarnation, it answers my questions. For mistakes in the past or past life, I expend that negative energy in this lifetime when I go through difficulties. Acceptance of the Islamic concept of submission is the key to so let understanding, understanding overcome you. Look up the proper definition of understanding. In reincarnation, a rebirth into a more favorable life is what is sought after. So whatever bad stuff is happening now, then understanding and dealing with it in the best, cleanest, most noble way is one less thing to worry about in the next life or near future. Read about Buddhism, sis. Don't worry. Even Buddha himself said to, follow, said to his followers to not pray to him, but to read the Dharma. In its entirety, the system is very logical. When I allowed negativity to eat into my thoughts, it took a lot to get me back on track. It's still happening. My test in this lifetime. Read Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. I'll send this book to you. It has accompanied me and I want it to benefit you. You'll be able to locate what is causing you to be upset or miserable and to deal with it. I've never been the religious sort, but there are so many guides out there that can change your life. All it takes is how you take a different perspective, a clearer picture. It's difficult for me to apply because I'm in a hostile and closed up environment surrounded by individuals with baggage of their own, but I still try. I will part with these words. Let everything happen to you, beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. Happy Guy Fawkes Day.